Get Moving TV. I'm Dr. Chris Landon and I serve as your host. Get Moving TV features patients who are cared for here in Ventura County by our team at the Pediatric Diagnostic Center. The team members come from Los Angeles County and Ventura County to serve the children with special health care needs here. You're going to meet today a patient uh, who we've cared for for over 10 years uh, and I'm very, very thankful that uh, he's able to join us here today. One of the things that is going to come out in this show are different technological advances, some of, that, some of which have originated here in Ventura County, and uh, our guest today uh, certainly has benefited from some of them. Uh, our episode today we're calling Breathe Easier, and I'd like to introduce my guest, uh, Scott Klein. Scott, welcome to Get Moving TV. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Well, Scott, uh, I have certain memories of how we first met, and uh, I think uh, if you could explain a little bit about how you came to our clinic and uh, how you were first diagnosed with the illness that you have. Well, I came to your clinic because I was in my mid-20s, and at that time, uh, Children's Hospital of Los Angeles was uh, finally putting an age limit on the people with cystic fibrosis, and uh, I had to find another doctor, and since my wife and I uh, had a house in Santa Clarita Valley, Valencia, and uh, we started looking around and uh, I'd heard some great things about your program and how different you were uh, as, a, as a doctor who cares about uh, his patients. I decided to go and see you and that was back in about 1994. So tell me how you were first diagnosed and tell me a little bit about cystic fibrosis itself. Well, you probably know more than I do, but uh, cystic fibrosis is um, a genetic disease where both of your parents have the cystic fibrosis gene, and then it's a one out of four chance that they will conceive a child with cystic fibrosis. Um, I was diagnosed uh, in 1970. The average lifespan for people with cystic fibrosis was only three years of age, so children weren't even making it to preschool or kindergarten. So as you can imagine, my parents were, were pretty panicked. And what happens, and you can probably explain this a lot better than myself, is each cell in my body is creating too much mucus, which is OK for my knees and elbows. But when you have already mucus in your lungs, it really, really becomes a problem because any small cold that I got uh, became pneumonia very, very quickly. So I from the time I was seven years of age, was on uh, nebulizers, breathing and medicine for at least one hour a day. And um, it was like uh, living with a, with a chest cold all of my life. Now, I was very fortunate that I had a fantastic doctor at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles called Dr. Wong, who um, was way ahead of her time, just like yourself. You um, are right up there with Dr. Wong. There's no doubt about it. But when I was four years old, she allowed me to play ice hockey. And I remember hearing later on in life from my parents that all the other doctors thought she was nuts. First of all, you have this uh, child that gets pneumonia very, very often and can get it uh, quite rapidly. But, and you're going to put them into a situation where there's cold, there's bacteria. But you know what? Ice hockey saved my life because of the exercise. I then went on to play uh, cricket in Australia when I lived there for a couple years in the late 70s. I played soccer. She allowed me to really exercise. And that, along with the medications, was able to keep my lungs clear so I could live a pretty normal life going through uh, grade school. Well, you're a guy who really does get moving there. Uh, I remember when we first met in, in clinic there, you were pretty depressed. You were going back and forth, trying to get your uh, degree in accounting, and uh, had a wife, had a child who's here in the audience today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we talked about is you needed to eat something more than junk food as you were driving back and forth in your car, and uh, that you needed to do something. And I remember you saying you were very proud of something, and that was that you were the only ice hockey player with cystic fibrosis in college in the United States. How, yeah. did, how did we start you back up? Because your lung function, you only had about a third of your lung left when we first met. Yeah, well, the one thing that you were so great at is you looked at it as a triangle, having cystic fibrosis. It wasn't just the digestive system, which uh, for most, I think, eight, most, I think about 80% of people with cystic fibrosis have a problem with their G tract, and I believe the average weight 
for a female with cystic fibrosis is 90 pounds. The average weight for a male is 120. I think I was about 130, maybe 135 with a, a brick on top of my head and soaking wet. So um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to be a functional person in society, so I really pushed myself to work eight hours, and I was working as an accountant and getting my uh, MBA with an emphasis in, in accountancy. And in the morning, I would eat you know, just a candy bar for breakfast and hit the road and be in that traffic for an hour. And it, it really caught up to me. But I think you made me realize that it's a triangle, and, and it's up here. It's got to start uh, in your head first, and you've got to take care of yourself. So. Um, I started eating uh, properly. I started um, not just playing hockey, but going to the gym and lifting weights and working out and um, just feeling good about you know, what was happening with me. And, and that obviously increased my uh, lung capacity a lot. I think we started with you with um, roller hockey. And uh, before you uh, underwent your transplant, uh, you were playing at least a minute or two. And what, what kind of role did you play in, while you're playing hockey? You know, I was pretty much the goal scorer because I couldn't get back on defense. My brother likes to call me a cherry picker, and I was probably the royal cherry picker out there because, you know, I, I, uh, before my transplant, I, I wouldn't even warm up the goalies. Uh, my lung capacity was down to about 17 or 20 percent on my PFV1s, and, you know, um, I would just go out there and, and try my best and, and really just concentrate on my offensive skills. I was really fortunate that I started playing when I was four years old. so. I, I knew pretty much what the other players were going to do so I could anticipate and um, that really helped but um, a year before my transplant what I really did was the summer about four months before my actual double lung transplant uh, which happened in September of 2003 is I looked at it as my Olympic event. This was my Olympic event, this uh, transplant and I started lifting weights. I, had, I was having trouble walking just from my living room to the kitchen, but from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night, I was uh, using dumbbells, laying down on the floor, and lifting weights. And now when I talk to people that are going through the lung transplant uh, operation and they're on the list and waiting to get it, you know, I tell them, you know, lift weights. You know, even if it's just two and a half or, or five pound weights, it really is going to help because it's going to strengthen the muscles around your lungs and your recovery is going to be a lot easier. Now you, when uh, you were diagnosed, uh, lifespan, uh, you were told, your parents were told was age three. How old were you when you were diagnosed? I was two years of age in 1970. What's the average age uh, of survival now? Now the average age is 36.8. You and I were talking earlier, they just, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger just signed legislation where there'll be newborn screening. And that's really what's going to get us a step ahead by knowing these children right, right from the day they're born. Absolutely, absolutely. There's been some fantastic stuff. Not only that, in 2006, uh, on January 1st, a person with cystic fibrosis that's on the transplant list automatically goes to the top of the list for a double lung transplant. When I was on the list, uh, I started in uh, February of 2001. Um, that wasn't the case. The doctors didn't want to say that one lung disease was worse than another. They didn't want to say that uh, COPD was worse than cystic fibrosis or Lamb disease was worse than COPD. Everybody started at the bottom. And so I was on the lung transplant list for 33 months and unfortunately a lot of people with CF passed away.